Our next guest, Sarah Kustak, will call the Nets and the Sixers game two tonight with Chris Sheeran and Jim Spinarkel in studio. The Yes pregame shows at 7.30. Game is at 8. And, of course, the Yes postgame to follow. Sarah, Michael, Don, and Peter, how you doing? Hey, guys. Wonderful, thanks. How about yourselves? Very, very well. That's are doing pretty well as well. I wanted to ask you about this. I thought that the net staff outcoached the Sixers staff, especially when it came to the big men in the first half, uh, first game. So what, what, what can the Sixers do to counteract where the Nets went small and kind of took everybody out into space? Well, first of all, I 100% agree with you uh, on that note. And I think with the Sixers, I'm going to be interested to see what Brett Brown does because uh, a lot of the limitations they have in terms of depth, in terms of you know some of the personnel and the lack of shooting, the lack of spacing, there's not a whole lot of adjustments you could make. I think the one thing that we did see that I anticipate heading into tonight, we may see more of, is Joel Embiid in the post. He spent a lot of time working off the elbows. He's a great passer. He did a good job early on attacking Jared Allen on the inside. He struggled from the three-point line, and he admitted that a lot of that was due to the fact that he was, you know, he's injured. He was doubtful going last game, questionable going into tonight, but, um, you know, I think that's, that's an area where they can try to expose the Nets a little bit more, putting him on the block, putting Simmons on the block. It is amazing to me, too, that the Nets have come to the conclusion if it's beyond five feet, let, let Ben Simmons shoot. I mean, that, that is a, I don't know if he could become that much of a better shooter, but that is a big flaw in his game, and it's a copycat league, and if, you know, they're going to hack him, and they're going to let him shoot from 10 feet, he just can't hit an outside shot, Sarah. Well, and to think about the fact, I mean, a big reason why everyone was high on Philadelphia is they have one of the most prolific starting fives on paper, uh, but... Simmons was basically a non-factor because of his uh, net ability to sag off him, help off of him because he couldn't shoot. Tobias Harris didn't get a lot of touches. The Nets entirely kept the ball out of J.J. Reddick's hand, and on the flip side of things, got him into foul trouble on the other end and a foul out of the game. But, yeah, I mean, Ben Simmons, I, I anticipate, though, he will come in very aggressive. Uh, the thing you got to watch out for with Ben Simmons and with the Nets is he thrives in the open court, where he is most dynamic and explosive and dominant is when he can get going in transition. Because the Nets were making shots, because the Nets were so good at getting back, it limited his fast break opportunities. Uh, so that may be an area where he'll try to really get a lot of his offense going. Sorry, you played. So how disrespectful was the phone situation on the bench? And does that tell you or give you an indication how disengaged the Sixers were in a game? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I know it came out that uh, Mayor Johnson was concerned about his daughter, so, of course, hopefully she is okay, and he said he was. We all know there is a multitude of ways in which if there is a outside uh, situation occurring, there are people you could say, hey, you can tell your wife, you can tell your friend, you can contact our security guard, you can contact X, Y, or Z. There are places around the organization that, okay, if there's an emergency, if there's something I need to know throughout the course the game let this person know and they can give me a tap on the bench uh you know there's so much support staff but yeah i mean especially a playoff game game one at home that that really shocked me and it would shock it shocked me that that was what went down especially you know it, it exacerbated by the fact that philadelphia ended up losing in the way that they did uh, do the nets see themselves as underdogs i didn't see a team the other night that <laughs> the other afternoon that looked like they didn't think they could win they, they seem to really believe it. I, I think they do, and, and they had good reason to. I mean, they finished off the season with similar records as Philadelphia had. They were 2-2 two and two in the regular season series, and one of those losses came down to a last-second shot. And I think, you know, throughout the course of this whole season, Brooklyn had been playing with a variety of different lineups. They've relied on their depth. Uh, such a balanced attack. Karis LeVert is a player that's been coming on and, and playing how we saw him play at the beginning of the year prior to the injury. And add on the fact I know there's a lot of discussion about this team lacking playoff experience, but guys like Jared Dudley, Ed Davis, uh, they bring Damari Carroll, they bring a, a playoff experience that I think has really translated into what this group has fed into, the belief they have. And, uh, you know, Michael, you said it off the bat, Kenny Atkinson has such a moxie, 
such a chip, chip on his shoulder, such a uh, exquisite preparation that everyone feels like they know the game plan, they know what's expected of them, and, and I think all of that combined has helped them to have a ton of confidence. All right, in about 30 seconds, I'm looking at this. If they could steal the series, or even if they make it a series and, and, and make it go the full, the full length of the series, do you think that this is a selling point to a free agent to say, this is where I want to go, I could be the final piece, or am I reading too much into it? No, I think it could be. I, I think it's already trending in that direction. You got young pieces, you got everything you would want in an organization from top to bottom in terms of culture, front offense, performance staff, coaching staff. Uh, it, it's a small league and word spreads quick. And I think just the feedback you've gotten from a lot of players that have been around the league uh, has voted well in in the area of the Brooklyn Nets. And, and I think just given what they've done to this point, uh, that certainly should be a draw for a lot of people. And it's turned a lot of heads. All right, Sarah, don't be nervous because somebody watching from the beginning of the game right to the end. I know you'll be great, but I'll be I'll be watching. You guys are the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. That's Sarah Kustak. She and I and Eagle call the game. Chris Sheeran and Jim Spinarkel in studio. Yes, pregame show at 7.30. Game is at 8. And then the yes postgame to follow. The only way to watch the Nets would be on yes because they've been around all season. Out